and we're cutting starters here today for the Highland Slate and uh, Certainty says that you can either use the shingles themselves for starters or you can buy their high performance starter uh, that's already pre-cut. For this being the first application I thought I'd try this and in my head I've been running the figures and I would highly recommend buying the pre-cut starter for this your pre-cuts are actually less expensive you get like 106 feet per bundle there's 50 shingles per square with this shingle and they're three foot long so you're only getting 150 feet per square in order to cut a starter out of the shingle from the front side you could use a hook blade or from the back side you could use a straight blade and all you do is cut the tab off and then set these pieces here aside because you can use them later on. We save the top tabs and if you're just a little short at the top of the roof, you can nail those tabs on. If you only need uh, three or four inches at the top, it saves you time and shingles to finish off the roof. You want to cut them off right at the top of the tab so that you got a straight bottom edge. The high performance starter also has a double layer of yes. starter strip down here. It is important to get the seal strip at the bottom of the roof. That's correct. But either cutting this shingle or using the high performance starter would give you that dual right. starter strip. You don't want to flip this shingle over and use it as a starter because with the 8 inch exposure on these shingles, you're going to lose the bottom row of shingles every time with these. Uh, you have to have the sealant strip down at the bottom. A way to reference where you nail the shingle is you have tab marks here at the top and in between each set of marks you can put a nail. If you don't offset the four and a half inches which is required for laying the shingle, you can see there you'll have an open seam every three foot. But by doing your four and a half inch soft set and using your rack lines, you hide that seam which guarantees there's going to be no leakage. Five nails per shingle above the drain line in between the tar strips. What size tins are you using there, Joe? Three by three by ten long. Which makes a great step flashing for that large of a shingle. Yep. You saw us doing all sorts of special things around the roof wall interface with the flashing tapes. And that's because this shingle has an eight inch exposure. And the minimum requirement for step flashing is the exposure plus two inches. And so because this has got an 8 inch exposure, we need to have a step flashing that's 10 inches. And Clyde at Dom Brothers has made these custom flashings out of 10 inch material. And there's just no way in the world to use existing step flashings with this shingle. And so what we've done is we've cut some of the wood off the wall so that we can tear out the original step flashings. We've reflashed it with re-splashing tape. We could have used certed flashing. We could have used Vicor Plus, but we put the flashing tape on the wall. But more importantly, we've used a 10 inch step flashing. And this will allow us to have the two inch overlap and make this area watertight. I've only got two rows of this shingle on. With the eight inch exposure, it means I'm 16 inches covered already across the roof. You're gonna cover a lot more area in a lot less time and you're using less shingles. Now are they sealing down already? Cool. Already. A few hours in the sun, they're sticking. I think the tip today was supposed to be 64. Once it gets warmer, they'll seal and stick pretty good because they got two lines of tar instead of normal just a single line. See that bottom of the tar line is at the top of the shingle and you want it to be in the top of that shingle. The coverage with the shingles is great. The eight inch reveal means that we can cover more area in less time with these shingles. In comparison to in the landmarks? In comparison landmark. to the landmarks, these are just, they're much more productive for labor costs. So you mentioned the back of this house was about 17 squares. Yes. How much time savings do you think using this particular shingle versus like a landmark for a three in one? This particular section, if we were using landmarks, it would probably take a whole day. With these shingles, we've only been at it for about three hours. A half a day just by using this shingle. With this Highland Slate, there's like 50 shingles per square versus 64 with the yep. landmark. Yep. Less is more with this. Awesome. Thank you. Yep.
Before you bid a job, you need to know how many shingles there are in a square of the product you're installing. And it's only common sense that a shingle like Highland Slate with 50 shingles per square is going to go up a lot quicker than your average 3-tab with 80 or your average laminate with 66. Now you save a little money on the nails. There's 250 nails used to put on a square of Highland Slate compared to 320 on an average square of 3-tabs and 264 on an average square of laminates. So you save a little money on the nails. The real savings is going to be on your labor and your time. These are what we cut off of the shingle. So we have a starter. We start off with our first piece. That way we have 12 inches covered over the roof. We're using a Sartide Cedar Crest cap. It's got a eight inch exposure, two layers. It's glued in the center. It's already a, perforated? Yep, 12 inch cap. So you have your black shadow line. You take it to this line here, it's a perforated line. And that makes a nice shadow line and raised yep. up a little bit. Versus their normal shadow ridge. Yeah, and it's easier to keep straight too because you've got that line right there to follow. And you run it east to west. And the reason we do that is because most of your weather comes from the west or the south. If you're going the opposite way of the, where the weather's going, you have less chance of it leaking. This is where you put your nails at. Okay.